Hello everyone, this is Ben and today we're looking at a task to IELTS essay. Let's have a look at the question first. So, nowadays some consumers are less influenced by advertising. What are the reasons for this? Is it a positive or a negative development? So, what I usually recommend is that you take a look at the essay yourself, just pause the video on each of the slides and read it and think about which kinds of scores you think it would get and why and then we can see how closely your predictions align with my predictions. So this is the first slide, the introduction. This is the second, so the first par body paragraph. This is the third paragraph, so it's the second body paragraph. And finally, this is the fourth and final slide, which is the conclusion. And if you do think about the scores, don't do it randomly. Of course, take a look at the uh, writing band descriptors for test two, which are available online. It says the public version, that means anyone can access these. Just do a quick Google search. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look at the essay. So first of all, it stands out that it's just a sentence. There isn't a full uh, paragraph as there should be. So you need the introductory paragraph. Uh, in task one, writing, you could possibly just have a single sentence as the uh, introduction, of course. But in test two, you need a proper introductory paragraph, which outlines in brief uh, what the essay is going to argue in the subsequent body paragraphs. And well, are, are these addressed? It says a few reasons, positive or negative, it says positive. But um, I, I certainly should briefly state why it's positive and briefly state what the main reasons are. So in terms of the, uh, the grammar and the style, no need for a comma there. It's clearly true that these days advertising doesn't, that's style, um, if you use a contraction like isn't or doesn't, that speaking style, it's just so you can say it fluently. There's no need to write it, certainly. It looks informal. So stylistically, that's a problem. So advertising does not influence people as much as in the past, basically as much as it did in the past, as it used to in the past. Which I believe is a positive development, I guess, if you don't want to repeat the word development, positive societal change. We don't say with, we use the preposition for with reasons, for a few reasons, but uh, honestly, a few. It's a bit informal. So let's say for various reasons. And this would be a better sentence. It's clearly true that these days advertising does not influence people as much as it did in the past, which I believe is a positive societal change for various reasons. Much better. But still, we're not meeting the expected requirements. Okay, so moving on to the body paragraphs. There is an argument that advertising uh, is playing an important role to let people acquire important information. So it means in enabling people to gain important information, but why not just make it uh, much simpler by using the verb inform? 
So when we say plays an important role, it's usually in something. And if it's a verb, in doing something. In informing people. Well, it's not just services, is it? It's also goods, products. So about products and services, about goods. And services, which are not the same thing. So goods, physical things you buy, like a smartphone, services, uh, things you um, you may pay for, but which you don't really get a physical product for, like travel insurance, for example. You pay for it, but you're not kind of buying a physical thing that you can use. Because uh, it talks about products here and services here like they're the same thing, but they're, they're not. However, since a huge amount of people have experienced purchasing overrated products, more and more customers don't make a decision relying on advertisements. Okay, so a few things to fix here. You don't really say amount of people, do you? Because amount is with countable nouns. I feel sick because I ate a huge amount of food. It's number of people because people is obviously countable. We say two people, so it's got to be countable. I want to get the grammar right. Since a huge number of people have experienced purchasing, I mean, experiencing purchasing things sounds a bit unnatural. You can experience a feeling like disappointment. So let's say experience the disappointment of purchasing overrated products. So overrated means... Um, people think it's better than it is and say it's better than it is and rate it higher than it is. So it's more about um, what normal people think, other consumers, rather than what the advertisers are doing. So I don't think that's the right word here. Like um, an overrated movie. If you think a movie is overrated, that means lots of people think it's a great movie. But you don't really think it's that great. Um, so overrated products, people think they're great, but you don't. So it's not really right here. I could say, you know, unsatisfactory products. I could say disappointing products, but I've already used the word disappointment and I don't want to repeat that. So I'll be quite literal. Um, products whose quality... So products, the quality of which products whose quality was exaggerated, made to seem bigger or better, exaggerated in advertisements such as TV commercials. Now, I don't like the fact that advertisements is already being used in that sentence. So uh, I could change the word here to like marketing or something else, but I'll just leave it as it is because it's getting a bit, a bit messy and there are a few other things that I need to change. So more and more customers. Again, we have to get rid of the contraction. Do not make a decision relying on advertisements. So we're talking about making um, purchasing decisions. And it's not really relying on, it's based on the advertisements. Relying on has a slightly different meaning. Like, you know, if you rely on your parents for money, you're reliant on them. It's your kind of dependence on them. Um, if you make a decision based on the advertisement, it means the advertisement is informing your decision and influencing what you decide. So make purchasing decisions solely or mainly based on the advertisements for those products. Now really, 
consumers is better than customers. Consumers, people who buy things, whereas a customer is a person um, using a particular business or service. But I'll, I'll allow it just because we're using consumers a lot elsewhere. Um, really, consumers are kind of potential customers. Uh, rather than actual customers for various products and services. Um, another reason could be that technology has been greatly developed over the past decades. As technology has been greatly developed over the past decades, nowadays consumers tend to verify the product through the online community or comments from the people who have already experienced the same items. Again, a few things to change. So, I mean, it's experienced using the same items, isn't it? But again, if we say items, we're thinking about really goods or products. We're not thinking about services. So why say service in the first place if you just want to focus on products? Um, so I'll kind of, yeah, I'll leave that. Um, but, you know, keep in mind why say services if we're not going to talk about services. Um, so another reason could be I don't like this could be part of it. Um, let's change that first of all. So I, I don't really get the could be, just is. And... Uh, as well as that, reason and argument aren't really the same thing, so I don't know what we're talking about. The reason for line of reasoning is basically argument. Another line of reasoning but again, um, maybe kind of restate why uh, maybe restate what we're talking about which is people's um growing mistrust in uh, in advertising it's a bit um it's a bit of a messy paragraph isn't it so we're talking about an argument that advertising is actually quite valuable it plays an important role in letting people know about products and services that they might otherwise know about, but then we change to a negative immediately, um, which is usually not what a paragraph does. Usually the next sentences support the topic sentence at the start, but we're straight away at a negative, at a contrast. However, since a huge number of people have experienced the disappointment of purchasing these disappointing pro uh, products, more and more customers do not actually make their purchasing decisions based on advertisements anymore. So then we're going to another line of reasoning, but again, this should link back to the topic sentence, but it doesn't because we've kind of bizarrely got this uh, kind of positive claim that some people, uh, some people might uh, make. Um, another weird thing is how it talks about as technology has been greatly developed. It seems like this very general, memorized, ILT thing to say. No native speaker will say, as technology has been greatly developed over the past decades, we'll talk about something like, um, uh, you know, gr greater internet access. Um, huge increases in the proportion of people who have access to the internet if we're talking about uh, things we can do online. Again, it, it's not really necessary information. It doesn't really add anything to the argument. So I'm just going to cross that out. It's not, it's not wrong. It's not got mistakes really with the... Um, with the grammar or anything like that, but it's just it's just weird. I don't like it. So another line of reasoning is that nowadays 
consumers tend to verify the product through the online community or comments from the people who have already used the same items. Um, yeah, I mean, verify the product doesn't make much sense. You, you kind of verify the quality of the product, I guess. Um, but not really the product, it's not a specific one, just a product. Any product tends to verify the quality of a product through the online community. A community we usually say we usually say in, and again it's it's not the, it's one of many. If we say the scientific community, that's okay because it's very specific. It's all the scientists doing research considered collectively. But online community, like a discussion forum, there are many, so we're going to use it. And, uh, and in an online community, there are many comments, so via posts and comments from not the people, not all the people, but from some people who have already used the same items. Uh, or the same item, because we said a product. So who have used the same item or have used the item in question might be slightly better. And next, we don't say internet, we say the internet. Um, but I don't really understand the sentence. The internet allows people to explore the entire service experience without actually using the item. Frankly speaking, I do not know what that means and if you can't understand what the writer means that's another small problem that's a, a big problem I don't like to do this I like to rewrite the sentence if I can but I genuinely don't know what it means so I'm just going to do a question mark um, so another thing with the logic of the argument is when we're talking about um our mistrust of advertisements and wanting to, I suppose, have a better idea about the quality of a product before we commit to buying that product. I don't really think of online communities so much. Uh, I think more of online reviews. And I know there are fake reviews, and that's a big problem these days. But we we look at the reviews and the star ratings from other customers who have used the, the items, and as long as we're happy that those are real reviews from uh, real-life customers and not fake reviews, I think that is um, what tends to influence us. So, again, I'm I'm not sure about the logic, and I'm not sure about the uh, the Lexus, you know, the vocabulary the person has. I don't know what they mean by online community to talk about particular products, which kinds of online communities will be discussing the quality of the products. Uh, I know in the UK, for example, there's a, there's a website, I think it's called uh, Mumsnet. It's for mothers who um, often talk about products, but they talk about a huge variety of issues. Uh, and sometimes they talk about, you know, the baby products they really like, and that that's an online community. And that would be an example, but it's, it's not really explained here. Like, I might give the example of uh, mum's name. Mum is, is mother. That's what we say in the UK. So mum's net is an online community for mothers. So yeah, there are issues not just with uh, particular uh, grammatical issues and word choice issues and style issues, but also the overall logic, the overall arguments that uh, the writer is trying to make. Okay, so moving on. Um, I agree with the viewpoint. That seems to start very suddenly, so... Let me just make it a bit smoother by adding this discourse marker. Personally... I agree with the viewpoint that this is a positive evolution. Now, evolution um, suggests a change that is positive anyway. 
something becoming more sophisticated. Um, positive evolution is not something I've ever heard before. Now, I understand the writer doesn't want to keep repeating the same words, but some of the writers that I, uh, some of the writers whose writing I look at, they're so desperate to change the words using synonyms that they they just kind of uh, Google the word or something and look up synonyms and they just change it. But what they uh, don't understand is that some words just don't go together. I'm sure it's the same in any language. It's called collocation. Collocation is words that go together. And positive development, negative development, they are words that often go together. They often go hand in hand. Positive evolution is not an example of that. So if people want to use synonyms, synonyms are, you know, different words with basically the same meaning or a similar meaning. You can't just go in a dictionary or thesaurus and just change single words without thinking about the, the context, you know, the other words that, um, that have to agree, agree with that word, have to kind of uh, go with that word. So, again, this is a new paragraph. So saying this, I think, is too general. I think you have to really restate it. Let's say the growing mistrust of advertising among consumers is a positive change, a positive change in society, a positive societal change. Firstly, the decrease of advertising. Well, why will it decrease? Um, so decrease in advertising would be decrease in the number of advertisements. Increase in, decrease in, change in something. Um, but we've not said why it will decrease. I'm just going to add the word resultant. It means as a result, the resultant decrease. So what I'm saying now is it will decrease because people mistrust it, uh, mistrust advertising, mistrust advertisements, and because people mistrust them, uh, advertisers will see advertising is less effective and therefore spend less money in it, at least uh, advertising in traditional ways. Um, again, it's still a bit messy because um, implying a direct link between mistrust and less advertisement would need some explanation. There are some steps missing. Um, but at least adding this word makes it better than just saying the decrease in advertising without explaining why there's a decrease in advertising. At least I'm trying to connect them logically uh, without adding whole extra sentences, which I do not really have space for, as you can see. So we'll prevent people to purchase exaggerated products. We say encourage people to. We discourage people from. We prevent people from. We stop people from. Negative ones usually have from with ing. Prevent people from purchasing exaggerated products. Um, again, the products aren't really exaggerated. It's the quality of the products that is exaggerated in advertisements. I'm going to change this a bit. So the, decre the resultant decrease in advertising will reduce the number of people who buy products So that's a bit messy. Who buy products that they are disappointed with. Again, this isn't perfect because a decrease in advertising doesn't mean um, all advertisements will disappear. There will still be advertisements. People will still see advertisements. So why will there be fewer people 
who are disappointed with the products they buy. Um, I guess less exposure to advertising could mean um, less overall influence of advertising. But again, it's not clearly explained here. Uh, for me, uh, a decrease in misleading advertisements, including false uh, advertisements with false advertising, that will lead to less disappointment. So again, you can see I'm not very happy with the logic of the essay in general, making a clear step-by-step -step argument. Uh, what companies pursue via advertising is to create a positive image of brand and drag people's eyes. So create a positive image of a brand, not necessarily uh, their own brands, because some companies, uh, you know, well, most companies, I suppose, they pay for an advertising agency to make advertisements for their company. So the advertising companies create a positive image of a brand for the company they're advertising for. You don't drag people's eyes. I can just about understand what the writer is trying to say, which is draw people's attention. Therefore, often time consumers are manipulated by the distorted and fake information that they advertise to make public easily swayed. Well, yeah, there are problems with the word choice. Often time is weird, just often customers are manipulated by the distorted and fake information. Um, again, word choice not perfect, misleading or false information. False means wrong, misleading means it's kind of right, but it's it's used to give people the wrong impression. Like um, it doesn't include the full information, for example. Um, misleading and false information that they advertise to make public easily swayed. Well, you don't advertise the information, you advertise the product, you provide the information not to make the public swayed, but to sway the public. Sway means influence. And again, sway the purchasing decisions of the public. Uh, the thing I mainly don't like about this is the f very first word, therefore, there's no logical connection uh, in terms of cause and effect between the previous sentence and the next sentence. Just because you want to create a positive image of a brand and attract people's attention to your brand and to your products, that doesn't mean that you are going to lie or manipulate them or mislead them. You might sell excellent products. You might have a, a very good company and brand and you're proud of your brand. So just because you want to show people a positive image and get their attention, it doesn't mean you are using uh, bad tactics to kind of trick people. So I really don't like that. Therefore, it's kind of a new point. It's not building on the previous point. So again, products, uh, sorry, problems with the, the overall logic and the overall argument. So it's a big recurring issue in this essay. Secondly, people are exposed to a tremendous amount of harmful products, advertising by its companies. So problems with the coherence there, products on advertising, products are advertised. That's passive, you know, they're advertised by companies. No need for the comma. The meaning is products that are advertised by companies. Um, again, it's not amount, it's, it's number. So uh, you could say amount of advertising, uncountable now. Of harmful products, but are advertised by by their companies, I guess.
For instance, alcohol advertising in Korea is displayed with beetle and famous, famous celebrities that may cause young people desire to buy. Um, so, yeah, for this one, um, I'm just going to add one thing for the previous sentence, actually. Exposed to tremendous numbers of harmful products that are advertised by their companies in manipulative ways. And I want to add that because I've just seen that it's talking about the use of beautiful and famous celebrities to basically get young people to do things that are bad for them, like buy alcoholic products which are very harmful for their health, whether you like alcohol or not. Statistically, um, w we know from research very clearly that alcohol consumption is very bad for our health. So, for instance, alcohol advertising in Korea. Well, we're talking about what's in the advertisements. So alcohol advertisements in Korea. They often display beautiful and famous celebrities but the word display isn't the most natural these advertisements often feature beautiful and famous celebrities a situation which may cause young people desire to buy well it can increase their desire to buy things that can encourage young people to buy something. But if we want to keep the word desire, let's say may increase the desire of young people to buy or to purchase alcoholic beverages that are undeniably harmful to their health, detrimental to their health. And finally, very short conclusion. In conclusion, nowadays, advertisements have less impact on people, which I assume this is a great way. Well, if you use a word like which, um, relative pronoun, it's replacing words like this. Uh, which I believe advertisements have less impact on people. A situation which I believe is a great way of development. Well, quite simply, is a positive development. I know the writer doesn't want to repeat those words in the question, but it's worse to change them with things that don't make sense, of course. So I'm just going to use uh, the words in the question. I believe this is a positive development. Uh, I guess that will protect people uh, more from being exposed. Not by, but exposed to excessive and unhealthy advertisements and they're exposed to those advertisements uh, by the advertising companies that's how you would use by the thing that makes it happen so a little bit messy because the amounts have changed so very quickly i'll read it again then we'll score it's certainly true that these days advertising does not influence people as much as it did in the past, which I believe is a positive change overall for various reasons. There's an argument that advertising is playing an important role in informing people about goods and services that they may otherwise not know about. However, since a huge number of people have experienced the disappointment of purchasing products whose quality was, was exaggerated in advertisements, more and more customers do not make purchasing decisions based solely or even mainly on advertisements. Another line of reasoning is that nowadays consumers tend to verify the quality of a product in an online community via comments from people who have already used the item in question. Personally, I agree with the viewpoint that the growing mistrust of advertising is a positive change. 
the growing mistrust of advertisement in society is a positive change. Firstly, the resultant decrease in advertising will reduce the number of people who buy products that they are disappointed with. What companies pursue via advertising is to create a positive image of a brand and draw people's attention. However, often customers are manipulated by the misleading or false information that uh, these advertising companies provide to sway the public. Secondly, people are exposed to tremendous numbers of harmful products that are advertised by their companies. Um, even if they're hiring advertising companies to make the advertisements, advertised by their companies in manipulative ways. For instance, alcohol advertisements in Korea often feature beautiful and famous celebrities, which may increase the desire of young people to buy alcoholic beverages that are ultimately very detrimental to their health, especially when consumed in excess. In conclusion, nowadays advertisements have less impact on people, which I believe is a positive development to protect people from being exposed to excessive and unhealthy advertisements. Okay, so what would this get? The scores I'm going to give it are... I'm going to give it five in everything. Why? So this is six. Does it address all parts of the task, although some parts may be more fully covered than others? Um, kind of uh, presents a relative position. Uh, not, not always. Um, if we look at the next part, relevant main ideas. Um, but some may be inadequately developed or so unclear. I think the main ideas are not always relevant, actually. As I said here, we're talking with the uh, we're talking in the topic sentence about how it's often seen to play an important role in informing people, uh, which is obviously it obviously would be a positive thing were it true, but then there's a sudden shift to this people being disappointed um, by misleading advertisements and then suddenly we're kind of switching to this about um, technology use and online communities and uh, in the last part i don't really kind of understand the point that is being made um so for this reason, for the uh, for the task response, I'd give it a five. Expresses a position, but the development is not always clear. Some main ideas, but not sufficiently developed. And it's it's five again for the next one, which is coherence and cohesion, because I think there is a lack of overall progression. And there are some inaccurate cohesive devices. Uh, for example, in the same part, the way I deleted therefore. Um, the reason I del deleted therefore is because I felt there was no real logical connection between uh, the preceding sentence and the statement that follows. And there were, there were various issues like that affecting the uh, cohesion and coherence. Um, with the lexical resource, I thought it was maybe a, a high five because um, limited range of vocabulary, minimally ad adequate, that seems a bit, a bit mean because some of the language is quite nice, like um, exposed to advertising um, and talking about the the brand image even if there's it's not 100 percent perfect words like manipulated a good sway is a good word but it's more just about how the language is used um there are noticeable errors in word formation for example that may cause difficulty for the reader so uh examples of that are the um the words advertising and advertisements being confused sometimes and the way that sway is being used not being exactly right, like making 
the public easily swayed. It's not, it's not really a correct use of that word. And finally, for grammar, uh, attempts complex sentences, but these tend to be less accurate than simple sentences. For five, I thought that was quite characteristic of this. Um, again, using which to build a long complex sentence can be good, but it's not used correctly um, because the word this hasn't been replaced by which. It would have to be advertisements have less impact on people and I believe that this is a great way um, to blah, 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 to protect people from being exposed. So um, there are quite a few short, simple sentences and there are efforts at longer, more interesting sentences, but they're not always done perfectly. So it's going to be a five for this one because six would be some errors in grammar and punctuation, but they rarely reduce communication. Whereas I think communication is actually being reduced because of the, uh, the limitations with um, the uh, grammatical range and accuracy that the writer has. So that's all from me. I wonder how closely your predicted scores align with mine. As always, thank you for watching and listening. Please feel free to leave uh, a comment on this video if you have any. Thank you and goodbye.